You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, Internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. In these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. Joe had huge problems with the IRS. You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, Internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. The Internet will never be the same. You're listening to K98talk.com. this promise to the American people. If you like your doctor, you will be able to keep your doctor, period. If you like your health care plan, you will be able to keep your health care plan, period. This is the most transparent administration in history. Not even a smidgen of corruption. The fact is, we had four dead Americans. What difference at this point does it make? If you've got a business, you didn't build that. Keep on doing what you do, Rick. You're my favorite host, favorite host, favorite host. It's time to hear the truth about America's biggest challenges. You're listening to America Off the Rails with your host, Rick Robinson. 
All right, well, happy Tuesday evening, folks. This is America Off the Rails. I'm your host, Rick Robinson. I'm joined by my Tuesday, Thursday co-host, uh, Miss Jen Homestead. Now, for those of you who like the intro, we've got, got a few things to let you know about, just a bit of, bit of housekeeping. This will be the last time on Tuesdays and Thursdays that America Off the Rails officially runs. We are rebranding Tuesdays and Thursdays because, yes, I officially have a co-host. I know I don't usually do co-hosts, but uh, eight shows a week was getting a little hectic, and she is... A brilliant lady who I've known now for a while on Twitter, and she's been on a couple of shows, and so I invite, I asked, she said yes, so I figured, what the heck. So, officially beginning next week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, while it will still be a part of Off the Rails, will be the Jen and Rick show. So, make sure you tune in, check that out. Kind of, it's still me talking, but I do have somebody with me. So, for those of you who get annoyed by the sound of my voice, I have somebody with a much better voice hanging out right beside me right now. Good evening, Jen. How are you? I'm doing good. (laughs) Nice. All right. So, sorry, apparently I forgot to turn off my email. I was like, what the heck is that noise? But anyway, so we do have a lot going on, a lot of things to talk about, and a lot of things going on in the news. Um, so at this point, I mean, we've bantered back and forth about a few different things that we talked about before we started the show. Uh, which one did you kind of feel like leading off with? Because we didn't really get a chance to talk about that before I had to, had to hit the let's go button. Let's uh, let's not start political. Let's dive in with the cell phones, uh, oh, the privacy yeah. and location services. All right. Yeah, we found an interesting story today. It's actually in a group that we hang out in on Twitter. Somebody dropped it in there, and we kind of thought it might be uh, something that some folks might need to know. So in the uh, the Big Brother segment, that, that may actually start becoming a weekly thing, who knows, uh, we have this. So we're going to get uh, get into that here in just a moment. But got to dust off an old 80s tune first. And apparently you should, because from Fox 59, um, apparently your cell phone can track your every move. If that doesn't scare you, then you're not paying attention. Um, There is a hidden feature on your cell phone tracking your every move. Software on Apple and Android devices keeps a record of your daily routine. It's called Frequent Locations. Um, Jen, I think when you were reviewing this, you found some scary things about some of the folks that were able to use this type of stuff. So feel free to dive in at any time. Right. So obviously it seems like a good thing to have on hand for law enforcement um, when talking about actual criminals. Super scary when you're talking about it being in the hands of the government, you know, and being able to persecute whoever they wish. But um, I found it kind of funny uh, that one group that's using it um, for uh, for their clients are divorce attorneys. So they are tapping into that part of the device and then able to catch them in lies about whether they said they've been somewhere or haven't been or, you know, talk to somebody. So they say that they're at work, but they're really at their mistress's apartment and the divorce attorneys are being able to catch them and use it in court. Yeah. So not only do we have 1984 style surveillance, it can now completely screw your world up. So, hey, guys, if you're going to cheat on your wives or wives, vice versa, make sure you turn off your location on your cell phone first. <laughs> Right. Wow. The an NYPD detective called it both a homing device and a confession uh, because of what the info they're able to gain off of it just by tracking your frequent locations and where you go most often and, and at what time of day. Yeah, but I mean, now that this is a thing, and this is just a random thought that popped into my head, but now that this is a thing, imagine now that this becomes public knowledge how boring the crime dramas are going to get on TV. <laughs> Like, hey, all we got to do is pull his cell phone. We'll know everywhere you went. It'll be a slam dunk case. Show's over in five minutes. Oh, crap. Now what do we do for the other 55? <laughs> right. Absolutely. Also, it doesn't say anything about the systems on some of these um, Go phones or the really super off-brand um, smartphones that don't run on Android or Apple that are pretty basic, but they still are technically a smartphone. So... Not sure if there's anything like that on those kinds of devices. I'm sure there is. Now, the the thing that, and this is just my tinfoil hat moment coming out, 
and, and this is because of my background. If there's one of these settings that you know about, there's one in, there's one somewhere in the phone that you can't turn off. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that did cross my mind. Uh, a little disconcerting, for sure. Well, I mean, think about it. I mean, I mean, th- this article basically outlines the exact things that were the fear basis for the book 1984 and it's the whole reason why a lot of us have had issues with some of the things the patriot act has allowed to do the data mining that's gone on even though it was supposedly only metadata this basically proves all of that was crap because the phones can basically tell every moment of every day where you are what you're doing and who you're with so right so this whole story that came out a year or so ago and everybody was like it's not that big a deal they're just collecting the metadata from the phone and nobody should be concerned because only a handful of people are going to know what to do with it or how to read it um this story kind of blows all of that out of the water i'm pretty sure because if your attorney can say hey we're going to subpoena your fire your your wife's attorney can subpoena your phone then i guarantee you it has a lot more data in there than they were telling you when they were saying hey, it's not that big a deal but what can yeah. i say yeah and 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 just the fact that this can be subpoenaed for things as like trivial as divorce court, um, and I don't mean to like belittle the process, but it's vastly different than you know a criminal act. So it it does make it kind of even that much more ugh, just kind of scary that uh, they're allowing that to be submitted in court just even for cases that are involving you know non amicable divorces. Yeah, I mean, that does actually, I mean, I know how they're getting away with it because I, I read through the language um, and how they're getting away with it is the simple fact of the matter is at least for the, the tracking program that you know about, you have to consent for it to be used because you have the ability to turn it off. So the fact that you're giving consent for your phone to track you means it's not a, a violation of your uh, Fourth Amendment rights if for government use or and and yes. honestly as far as a divorce attorney goes since it's since it's a civil matter even though it's happening in a court of law there is no right. fourth, there is no fourth amendment protection from private citizens that's that's one right. thing that a lot of folks don't understand uh coming yeah. from public sector law enforcement and then going into private sector more than once i was able to actually dress down a uh, an officer because he would try to get onto me for how I was doing things when I was wearing a security uniform. And I flat out told several of them in front of their supervisors that they didn't know what they were talking about because they were trying to tell me that I had contaminated a crime scene because I had uh, searched through a box that someone had left after I'd apprehended them. And I, I plainly point blank told them, you don't know what you're talking about because you have a state seal on your badge. I do not. What I'm doing is as a private citizen. You can choose to use the information that I give you or not, but it's not a tainted crime scene. And the, right. same, the same thing happens in civil courts. There is no Fourth Amendment protection. So the fact, if you consent to have that turned on, be well aware that if you're doing something crazy, the, your, your soon-to-be ex's spouse can actually, or attorney, right. can, can subpoena that and basically hang you out to dry. So, But I guess the idea for me that, that makes it scary, too, is that technically we've consented by just having the phone and it being turned on. When I had gone through and done some other things in the settings of my phone, you know, that I didn't want to be available or didn't want features I didn't want turned on. I still didn't ever find this or see this. So it wasn't until it was like walk through step by step, here's how you turn it off, um, that I even noticed that that was even there because it's so buried. So that's kind of a part of it that makes it, you know, really kind of crappy that it's consent, but you, it's so hard to even find on your phone in the first place. Yeah. I mean, you do have a good point there. I, I guess it wasn't that diff- <coughs> that difficult for me to find because I, I have a pretty technical background as it is. So if I already knew where all that stuff was. It's the first time I'd ever seen it out in print. That's why I was like, Ooh, now that that's public knowledge. We should probably talk about that. <laughs> yeah, totally. Because, yeah, I've actually known for a while that your phone could do that. It's one of the reasons why for months when everybody was making the whole stink about it, metadata and everything else, I'm like, yeah, you don't know half of what these things can do. Well, yeah. I mean, like, I had location services turned off. I had some of the, like, basic location stuff, but did not realize that there was a whole other layer to that, uh, that that wasn't necessarily tied into that one, so... Whatever. It's uh, it's fixed for me now. I recommend y'all look this up and go fix it on your phones. Well, Unless you just want to take a walk on the wild side, I guess. It's as fixed as you can get it without a hacker. Right. That's, all, that's all I'm going to say. 
Yeah, yeah. It's no longer accessible for an attorney, but the information is still there for the government. And then, <laughs> just saying, everything's available for the government. Well, I mean, this is true. I mean, like I, like I say all the time on Twitter, it's nineteen, it's nineteen eighty four and twenty sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I think we've about beat that topic to death. One of the things that I definitely wanted to make sure that we did today, because we actually tried to do this on Tuesday and it didn't really work out very well because we um for those of you who m- might have missed Tuesday's episode I nearly wound up in Oz instead of winding up in Oz I wound up with no power so we had one of the uh, other show hosts who has basically been doing podcast up until now uh, Jessica Sanders step in to offer to produce so her, she and JR were going through the normal setup just instead of it being from the usual command center in Oklahoma, we were in, I believe she's in North Carolina, if memory serves. I think that's what she said. Um, and then I was on a phone. So there were a few things that we tried to do that involved the normal clips and stuff that I usually try to run on either Tuesdays or Thursdays. And it just didn't work out very well because I couldn't hear the clips very well. So right. one of the things I'm working on doing while I'm prattling on here because can't seem to make it happen as I'm trying to get the five minute Patriot from the other day uh, to pull up so we can actually uh, not only listen to it this time or or have everybody else listen to it this time, but we can actually interact with it because this time we should both be able to hear it. And it actually does kind of meet up pretty well with all the craziness that's been going on on Twitter for the last few days. And I think I finally have it responding, so here we go. Welcome to the 5-Minute Patriot. And now, here's your host, Alan Ray. (laughs) It's time we ask ourselves if we still know the freedoms intended for us by the Founding Fathers. James Madison said, We base all our experiments on the capacity of mankind for self-government. This idea that government was beholden to the people, that it had no other source of power except the sovereign people, is still the newest, most unique idea in all the long history of man's relation to man. For almost two centuries, we have proved man's capacity for self-government. But today, we are told we must choose between a left and right, or, as others suggest, a third alternative, a kind of safe middle ground. I suggest to you there is no left or right, only an up or down. Up to the maximum of individual freedom consistent with law and order, or down to the ant heap of totalitarianism. And regardless of their humanitarian purpose, those who would sacrifice freedom for security have, whether they know it or not, chosen this downward path. That was a passage from the 1964 speech Ronald Reagan gave in support of Barry Goldwater. A speech that challenged President Johnson's progressive Great Society movement. A speech that catapulted Reagan to national prominence. It's a speech that should be taught to each and every child in school. Their senior year as they prepare to vote, as they prepare to come, become adults, as they prepare to find their way among this great nation that we still possess. No left, no right, no middle, only up or down. Think about that for a moment. We have faced nothing but down under our current president for the past seven plus years. Our morality is down. For goodness sakes, we're arguing over whether men should use women's bathrooms. How ignorant is that? People in the workforce are disappearing. Yeah, they're saying unemployment is at a low. Well, that's because people have given up. They stopped looking for jobs and have become hopeless dependents upon the welfare state. Respect from our adversaries is down. Used to be our enemies feared us, and we slept safely at night because of that fact. Now, we're not so sure, are we? Race relations down. It's chaos. It's horrible out there. We're literally being provoked by minions of our own president into destroying each other because of our skin color. 
It's repulsive just to think about. Ronald Reagan had it right that speech was written over 40 years ago. And he knew, even back then, that we were heading down a path that was going to lead to the destruction of the United States of America as we know it. At the end of his speech, he said, Alexander Hamilton warned us that a nation which can prefer disgrace to danger is prepared for a master and deserves one. Admittedly, there is a risk in any course we follow. Choosing the high road cannot eliminate that risk. Already, some of the architects of accommodation have hinted at what their decision will be if their plan fails, and we are faced with a final ultimatum. The English commentator Kenneth Tynan has put it this way, he would rather live on his knees than die on his feet. Well, patriots, I, for one, do not plan on living on my knees. As a nation, we are being brainwashed into accepting progressive socialism as a valid way of changing the United States of America. It's not. It's disgusting. It erodes your freedoms. It takes away your liberty. And it leads to nothing but totalitarianism in our government. It's time we start pushing back. I'm Alan Ray. God bless you. And God bless America. You can find Alan Ray on Twitter at TucsonL65. Thank you for listening. This is the 5 Minute Patriot. All right, folks, so that was the 5-Minute Patriot with Alan Ray. Now, if you want to actually hear the speech that he was referencing, you can find it on YouTube. If you haven't ever listened to it, I highly recommend that you do so. The freakiest thing, I mean, it's, it's if you were listening to the words that he was saying, it's even more, it's even more eerie when you hear uh, Reagan saying them because, again, this was a speech from 40 years ago, but it sounds like he was talking about right now. It really is that creepy when you listen to it. And it's one of the reasons why I wanted to actually play this and give JR the opportunity to actually hear it because I, I knew she couldn't the other day. Because everything that he talked about is everything that we spend all day hear, hearing and seeing on Twitter. Is Our, our country is a mess and it's gotten worse, not better. And I think at this point, whether anybody wants to admit it or not, the blame for that belongs squarely at both parties' feet. And I'm not sure how to fix it at this point because one party seems to uh, not know what it wants to do and the other one is hell-bent on electing a Democrat. So I'm a little confused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we've got... I mean, and, and we also have to remember that over the last few years, the Democrats have been kind of going through an identity crisis. Um, and it, it may not be so strong and loud. But I mean, if you talk about the shift left with Obama and then even having a socialist running as one of the two major candidates for the nomination for the Democratic Party, um, that's a pretty significant left hook. And uh, not all Democrats are happy about it. So we've got two parties that have been pretty splintered and um like you said, I don't know how it goes from here. I don't really know how it gets fixed, especially not with someone as boisterous as Trump, you know, dominating news cycles and bullying his way to this Republican nomination, which just seems to get more and more inevitable. No, and the interesting thing is, you know, because up until now, it's all it's all been splintering on our side. You've got all the folks that are mad because Kasich stayed in. You've got the folks at this point that are like, well, even Cruz is technically mathematically not eligible anymore. So why doesn't he get out? And now you see Bernie Sanders taking a page from our party's tactics for this election cycle because he's already told everybody, I know I can't win. I'm still not getting out. Yeah, and I don't. There's this fine line between like nobly fighting for what you think like are the best principles and ideals for moving the country forward and just kind of being the spoiler to be the spoiler so that you can have your day in the sun and say some of the things you want to say or possibly make them more mainstream. Um, I don't know if it's vindictive or not. It kind of seems like it is. Well, I mean, come on. He's an old cranky Jew. Of course he's vindictive. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Did I say that out loud? <laughs>
Nobody yell at me. I have a Jewish co-host on Saturdays. I'm allowed. He's he, he's told me that I can make fun of Jews all I want. So, <laughs> not, but not uh, not really. Just and especially fair, especially I'd make, not. I'd Bernie, make fun of Bernie, Bernie regardless. So I was gonna say he he would actually kill me if he knew I just took a shot at Bernie. Um, he has actually been a diehard Bernie supporter from the beginning, which is funny because he's a millennial. And if you look at their numbers, the majority of the millennials lately have all been shifting the other way. And he's still violently clinging, clinging to the burn cream, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So, yeah. Ugh, I can't even look at my I can't even look at my Facebook feed because of the feel the burn. Oh, that's happening. right. I forgot. You are, you, are at the, you are at the upper end of that millennial thing, aren't you? Yes. So, I forgot. We yes, I about somehow clumped in with like the 19 year olds, but somehow I'm still a part of their generation. Well, it's because um, I've seen your picture. You look 19. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not. I wish. No, not really. I don't. I don't wish I was 19 right now. I, uh, but I, um, yeah, I, it's almost, I mean, it's just like a minefield to even try to go on there right now. <laughs> I can't. I'm just like, I want to block everybody. I want to, I want to, you know, unfriend everybody because i'm just like you can't possibly be this dumb but no you are and i don't like to see that displayed so publicly so for anybody who's wondering when jr does open up the feed this is what she's screaming to all her friends that's not how it works that's not how any of this works (laughs) exactly exactly oh and and it's funny too because even the ones that don't that that are like hard uber left um and they detest Donald Trump, they've still also all bought into this whole delegate stealing thing. So like Cruz and Hillary are both like more evil than Sanders or Trump are. Because, I mean, Trump is more racist to them, but but he's not more evil because, see, it's just those evil people that have been in government that know how to steal these delegates and steal these votes and disenfranchise the American public. And they're all the enemy. So it's kind of funny that they almost like side with the Trump crowd on some of this. Dude, and I know you've seen it because I, I wade into the middle of it half the time on my timeline. These people that are all about this whole delegate stealing are some, I, I'm sorry, there's not a nice way to put this. They're just dense. They're dense or straight up, uh, you know, purposefully ignorant. Like they don't want to learn about the process because then it changes what their premise is so they can't they can't say uh oh you know what i didn't know it worked like that i mean for whatever reason even some people that before all of this um i felt like i had very good conversations with even you know fought alongside them on some things some issues planned parenthood stuff like that going on that it seems like what were once reasonable people who could you know have like a rational conversation on a multitude of subjects and and even come to new conclusions once pervaded, presented with more with more evidence and and everything are now completely incapable like completely incapable they refuse anything that does not go along with what they think or what they want to think or what Trump says or one of his people say and it's just absolutely baffling Yeah, there was an interesting progression on Twitter because it's like you said, you know, for the longest time, like some of these names that are now just like completely synonymous with being T-zombies or whatever colorful name you want to give them. They used to be the same people that we would interact with. We would actually uh, stand shoulder to shoulder with on a lot of issues. And then within like two months of uh, Trump declaring, it was like you could start seeing some of them saying crazy things. And all of a sudden we're all sitting here and it sounds all like this. My God, are you still talking? And then they just keep going and going and going. And then about six months in, we're all like this at this point. We're like disowning anybody that we know that even says, hey, I'm going to vote for Trump. And in our heads, this is about what it sounds like. Just when I think you've said the stupidest thing ever, you keep talking. And that basically sums up the entire progression of Twitter for the folks that we used to think were conservative that have now completely lost their minds. And the thing about it is they're the ones that still are telling everyone that they're the conservatives and we're the liberal trolls. Well, and it's interesting because then you have things which can kind of lead into something else that we wanted to talk about. But you've got people like Boehner, who is like the ultimate establishment Republican with the beginning of all of this is who they were saying, you know, these are the type of people that did all these terrible things while we were, you know, while we've had control and 
they didn't get anything done or they catered to Obama and the liberals and yada, 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 on and on and on. And then Boehner comes out today and there's a clip of him, at, I think at Stanford is where he is, and it, it obviously supports Trump. And it's like, is that not a stat? That's an establishment, you know, rhino hack. And they're like, oh, Boehner was smart and in office for so long. So he, you know, is supporting Trump because he knows what it's like. Wait, what are you even saying right now? It's just a just no matter what, they just flip it and spin it and twist it into whatever it is that they whatever it is to make Trump still be right and make their choice still be right. Actually, we do have that clip, so let's go ahead and play that real quick. We'll go ahead and take the break a little bit later than usual because we got a couple minutes late to start anyway. It's not, I mean, what are they going to do? Fire me. I'm the boss. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, it's not very loud, though. Let me see if I can get that up a little more. <laughs> oh, for some reason, it's not playing very loudly. Oh, anyway. I was hoping you guys were going to be able to hear that, but it wasn't very loud. I, I didn't really have time to get it uh, prepped or get the audio raised up. But anyway, he actually compared Cruz to being Lucifer in the flesh. Now, it's interesting because you see two different arguments from the Trump camp. One, either Boehner's finally come to his senses and realizes that that now that he's not the, the guy in charge in in Congress, that, he, that Trump is the guy that's going to get it all fixed. But you also... There's another side of the same argument with the same Trump people that are like, well, Boehner's only supported. Boehner only said that because he's tacitly working for Cruz, because Cruz is establishment and Trump isn't. Yeah, it which it's just it's just absurd. But I mean, here here's like a little. Uh, obviously, this is spliced some, but the basically the quote it's like Ted Cruz is Lucifer in the flesh. Then he goes on to say, I have as many Democrat friends as I have Republican and I get along with almost everyone. But I've never worked with a more miserable son of a bee than Ted Cruz over my dead body. Would he represent Republicans? Um, that that's not holding anything back there. No, it's really not. And, and the interesting thing about that, though, is think about that with, with, with someone who was so vehemently despised. By the time he left office, stands there and tells you how much he can't stand one of the people that's running for president. I'm sorry, that would be the one that got my vote hands down. I don't care about anything else. Right, especially if you're claiming that it's all because Buck the establishment. Yeah. Like if we're that's, that's what that's not the word they're using. But thank you for editing. Well, well, you know, <laughs> but I mean, you know, really, they're they're like let's let's just get. That their whole thing has been immigration, the wall, and like getting these establishment, you know, and they use that C word that I won't say, um, you know, the let's get all those establishment conservatives who aren't really conservatives out of there. And they have had left and right establishment people come in, um, come out in support of Trump and they just ignore it. I mean, and I don't get much more establishment than Christie either, but that <laughs> was so long ago now that they don't even count it. He's a he's a Trumpy. So, um, but heaven forbid Jeb Bush is come out and say that he would vote for Cruz over Trump or he wants Cruz over Trump. Um, that automatically means Cruz's establishment. All right, folks, well, we do actually have to go ahead and take a break, pay some bills, but you heard it here first, right on, uh, right here on America Off the Rails, or soon to be the Jen and Rick show here on Tuesdays and Thursday nights. Uh, Chris Crispy, the Frumpy Trumper. We'll be right back. All right, folks, this is Rick Robinson with you. I want to tell you about some friends of mine from a company called Security Enforcement Specialists. When I ran my security agency for 12 years, I worked with one of these partners on a daily basis. He's been involved in this agency now, and with his other partner, they do have over 30 years of experience in the private security industry. If you own a business and you need someone to keep you or your customers or residents safe, then I highly recommend contacting Security Enforcement Specialists today. Give them a call at 405-703-1796. Again, that's 405 703 1796. Again, tell them Rick from K98 Talk sent you. Like I said, if you need the help, they are here for you. So make sure that you uh, go look them up, check them out, and see what they can do.
We will never fully understand what we've asked of our military service members or their families, asking them to put themselves in harm's way, to endure it all. But we do understand that it's our turn, our duty, to keep them secure for the rest of their lives. Wounded Warrior Project long-term support programs help our most severely ill or injured veterans live independently, at no cost for life, so that they might stand at ease. Join us at findwwp.org. Think fast. In the short time it takes to listen to this message, a small flame can turn into a big fire. Several minutes more, and thick, poisonous smoke may have filled your lungs and reduced your ability to respond. Give it five, and your entire home may be filled with flames. Keep breathing. We've got you. Don't let your world go up in smoke. Have working smoke alarms and always stay in the kitchen when cooking at high temperatures. Learn more at usfa.fema.gov, because fire is everyone's fight. If you want to work until you keel over, have less of everything in retirement, or give back more of your hard-earned money to the stock market again, then just ignore me. But if you'd like to protect the money you save, receive a steady, predictable retirement income, and enjoy financial security for as long as you live, then listen to this. You can download a free report that reveals the wealth-building secrets Wall Street and the banks don't want you to know. You'll learn how you can get guaranteed growth, safety, and real prosperity without risking your money in the Wall Street casino and how to get the money you need when you need it simply by asking for it. This is the best way to have a 100% secure retirement and know your money will last as long as you do. To learn more about this method and to get your free report, go to 29security.com. That's the number 29security.com. 29security.com. Go to 29security.com. That's right, folks. We are back. We are live. Don't yell at me. I played the longer cut back in because I had to get a sip of coffee. Now, we've had a bit of a breaking story while we were on commercial. Um, my esteemed co-host is a little more up to speed on that, so at this point, I'm going to let her lead off with that one because I've been doing a lot of talking tonight, so it's your turn. <laughs> okay, so I was just telling Rick about um, I found that, well, someone else pointed it out to me, but today, Andrea Tinteros, who I've kind of thought has lost it a little bit, she went... Um, she she's been pretty pretty pro Trump, um, and specifically because of his anti-establishment stance. Um, but she today then kind of came out with a partially with a liberal talking point. Um, so she's kind of gone off the rails. She's not on Fox right now for undisclosed reasons. And uh, she came out with this tweet, which, of course, just disappeared for me. Um, but basically, she was using a liberal talking point saying that um, women, that equal pay exists, but there are many industries where it, where it doesn't, um, where women aren't getting paid equal to men, and that's a fact. So she's bought the whole 79 cents to a men's dollar because apparently in her new book, in the bio, she says that women have everything except for equal pay. Nice. So, you know, and this is something that's been <laughs> bothering me now for a while. I'm, I, Especially when I realized that, and you know, I still listen to Sean every once in a while because sometimes I have to because there's only a handful of stations in my town and I, they're just, you know, sometimes you got to turn on something, especially if you're rushing home and you're not sure what you're going to talk about on the radio, you can always turn on somebody else's show and say, hey, yeah, nah, you're kind of talking about that wrong, so I think we should talk about it this way. But anyway, so one of the things that I have noticed uh, during this whole election cycle is it seems like everyone that I once actually truly considered conservative 
really ain't not so much. I'm just saying. Um, I mean, and I and I understand that not everybody on Fox has conservative leanings. They were actually talking about that on a show I watched the other day, where you know the the commentators, the primetime folks, those are usually the ones with more conservative leanings. But they do have folks that try to do the news uh, more neutral, supposedly, and they even still have some left leaning folks. But up until recently, I kind of thought Andrea was one of the right leaning folks. But I'm starting to th- think that. A lot of this has been perception, and I think that's one of the things that's really starting to kill Fox. Yeah, it's really disappointing. And and I don't know that it's so much that it's just perception as it is that I think that the nature of their celebrity um, and the way in which they've, you know, become popular kind of lends to a more populist view of the world, if that makes sense. So it kind of, at first, it's like really annoying. And, you know, they used to espouse all these principles or they at least read the, you know, the bulleted talking list, talking point list really well. Um, and now it seems a little bit more like, no, they've, they've kind of always, I don't, we're always kind of waiting for someone like this to be able to jump on board with. And it kind of goes along with their more natural tendencies um, because it makes sense to them because it's kind of what they are and what they want too. I mean, they're attention getters, they're entertainers, they're celebrities, and that's what Trump is. Yeah. I mean, from that perspective, I guess it makes sense to me though. I mean, and maybe it's just because a lot of what I started doing, I patterned after a lot of those folks because that Mm -hmm. was, that was what I did most of the time when I was running my business. I mean, I was up 22 hours a day. So usually I had something on, on the radio and I just got to the point where talk radio was usually what I wound up listening to pretty much any time I was in the car. And the more I heard it, the more I liked. And I was always, you know, just one of those things where I was like, I bet there's probably a way to do this. And then technology came along and suddenly you didn't necessarily have to be in a radio studio uh, or being paid by a radio station to do a talk show. You could do one if you knew what to do. And since then, it's just kind of taken off on its own but these are the same people that i looked up to and i mean i've even seen some folks i mean like even glenn beck to a point has just kind of gone just a little too far in some respects and i just i I don't understand it's like after hearing your own voice for such an extended period of time they all start slowly drifting into the ann coulter zone yeah who i mean just like took a head dive into an empty pool I mean, she no, just no, is really, no. she was always shock and awe and she was always controversial, but this is, I, I, it's like, I don't even, I don't even know what to say about her. It's so like, it's so mind boggling to me <laughs> what has happened to Ann Coulter well, let's and then, be, let's and then be other people though, following like, suit. Let's be fair though. When she jumped into the pool, it wasn't empty. It was full of Trump aid. She drank it all. Okay, that, yes, it like immediately like seeped into all of her pores. I mean, yeah, I mean, we're not talking like drank, like opened her mouth. We're talking like she she jumped full bore in, soaked it up like a sponge. And next thing you know, she's sitting on the bottom of the pool going, yeah, I should have done this a long time ago. <laughs> While she chain smokes her cigarettes. And, ch- um, and chugs a Red Bull. Don't forget the Red Bull. Yeah, I'm not sure it's Red Bull, but we'll go with that. Yeah, I mean, there's probably, well, it, it's a Red Bull can. I think there's probably vodka in the can, but, you know, that's a story for another day. <laughs> and she might need a handkerchief for some white powder, but um, I think that... Wait, are we still I, are we still talking about Anna or did we start talking about JD? Oh, oh shots fired. <laughs> um, he ducked out of the room on me. I could make fun of him, though. <laughs> I do think that uh, it this the equal pay thing is interesting coming from someone who has been such a conservative woman on the side, and I don't know if that's it has to do with her stuff with with Fox, and maybe she feels like she wasn't getting paid what she should, and I don't know who she's maybe comparing herself to, but certainly she can't compare herself to Gutfeld or even Bowling, who is also bonkers right now in my book, but. Um, it's just really interesting that she chose to kind of lead with that, I guess. It's really. Yeah, I mean, that you're, you're like, what? I mean, she's been suspended for, what, all of five minutes? And the first the first major yeah. major tweet she does is, hey, guys, I'm really a Democrat. <laughs> yeah, pretty, yeah. <laughs> basically. 
And I, I think it's funny, um, someone that I'm in, a, in, in DM with, uh, Alex says, if this was so true about all of this equal pay thing, then, you know, all and all of these corporations are so evil and they're profit driven and morally corrupt monsters. But then they voluntarily pay men more when they could hire women for 20 percent less. That doesn't make any sense. Oh, no, it actually does not. So the whole point is kind of just she just kind of took a hammer and just nailed it into the ground. But I think that uh, I think Tantaros is going to do a little bit more of this because she ever since she had that walk off off the set that then was leaked to the um, to the Internet um, that was like after hours on Outnumbered and she like stormed off and just like lost it with a guest. Um, she's gotten more and more combative and has come out a little bit more brazen on Twitter with kind of anti anti conservative things. So I don't know if it'll just continue from here on out and she'll just expose herself for what she really is or if it's a phase. I have no idea. I don't see. That's the thing. Uh, before everybody at Fox pretty much went Trump tastic. I might have I might have said it was a phase. I mean, I don't know if I mean because let's face it, the, some of the folks that actually own Fox aren't necessarily very conservative folks. I think they just found a way to make some money off of conservatives, um, and they figured out a way to make a market that didn't really exist. But at the same time, I just I can't I can't fathom the idea of people that uphold the same ideologies that were just talked about in that five minute Patriot clip that we listened to earlier in the speeches that that Reagan has made and all of the things that we've seen in our lifetime can all of a sudden just throw it all out the window for some guy with a triple on his head who says he's going to build a wall and make America great again. To me, that's disingenuous to everyone because it goes against everything that they've talked about for the entire time that they've been on the air. And it's why no matter what, and, and this is what concerns me for all of these guys. I mean, if you look at Fox's ratings since this election cycle started, they were the highest rated cable news station in the world, basically. And there were times when they would rival in their even in their prime in their prime time. Other like ABC, NBC in their regular prime time lineup were actually having to compete with Fox and their numbers are through the floor. And they're, it's just like, it, it, no, and now they're all adopting Ann Coulter syndrome because it's like, oh, nobody's watching us anymore. We better do something crazy to make sure they're paying attention. And I just, I, I don't understand it. Yeah, I, mean, I don't, I don't know where they go from here, honestly. Um, it particularly, uh, they'll be fine if Trump wins the nomination and carries that through. I mean, they'll, I guess they'll be justified or vindicated with their. Um, coverage and the way that their pundits have have leaned but if he doesn't or once we get slaughtered in november i don't know where they go from there and i don't know how they rebuild a trust with the actual conservatives that used to look to fox as kind of a refuge from all you know not a 100 percent refuge obviously there's still going to be things and people you disagree with that's what happens but right, um, no. definitely a refuge from all the just like overbearing liberal media. Yeah, I mean, but it's a crazy to think about, though, because it's like you just said. I mean, if if one, either Trump doesn't make it to the general or two, when he doesn't survive the general, because you and I both know he's not going to. These folks aren't going to have careers left anymore. They have thrown in so heavily with this guy that that when he goes down and he will one way or the other. I mean, unless there's like some serious buyouts going on behind the scenes, every single poll pretty much points to the fact that Hillary's going to mop the floor with him. And if all of these stories, like the one that we just saw earlier today, keep leaking out, there's going to be no way that he's going to survive the general. I mean, and I'm sure you know which one I'm talking about, the one where basically during the uh, Tyson uh, rape case, he had basically blamed the the victim and was like, um, well, uh, maybe she shouldn't have... <laughs> Oh, I think I'm losing JR. We have lost JR. One moment, please. All right, so while I'm working on trying to get my co host back here, uh, what I was saying was that uh, there was a story that broke earlier today about a statement that Trump made a few uh, years ago, and I think she's back now. JR, are you still with us? 
Okay, sorry. For some reason, my internet just dropped for like 30 seconds there. Yeah, I don't know what it is with you female co-hosts tonight, but Stacy had the same problem on JD's show. <laughs> I smell conspiracy. Let me go get my tinfoil hat. No, I'm just playing. I go and look, and I'm like, not connected. What? So. Hey, I thought it was me. Remember, I live in the middle of nowhere. My internet drops all the time, so I'm just I. <laughs> I expected to be completely off the air, and I go back and I'm looking. I'm like, no, I'm still broadcasting. Where did she go? <laughs> no, it just it just dropped for a minute. I don't know what that was, but then it came right back on. So, oh well, there you have it. All right, so we are down to the last few minutes. Now, this will probably be one of the last times that I will do this particular segment with you on the line until we can figure out a way to actually get you incorporated in it. But since we didn't get a chance to do it Tuesday, because I guess uh, Jess either wasn't comfortable with reading them or we ran out of time, I do want to make sure that we get the uh, Hillary's email segment in for today because I will probably be taking tomorrow night off. Um, So bear with me for a second while I get that queued up, and then we can start wrapping the show. Folks, it's time for a day in the life of Hillary's server. Without further ado, here are the latest uh, messages from Hillary's server. This one is uh, from hdrclintonmail.com to Terry McAuliffe. Subject, ironic thought. Terry, actually, hang on. I got a little bit ahead of myself there. This one's still Terry McAuliffe. This one is subject, executive order. Terry, thank you so much for the open display of voter fraud on my behalf. With the executive order you signed this weekend, allowing ex-criminals to vote was pure genius. And as you know, every vote we can get, no matter how we get it, is needed. Let me run something by you. Since you can allow convicts to vote with a stroke of your pen, can you sign another executive order banning those disrespectful millennials from voting in November? And remember, old friend, cheating for the Clintons greatly extends your life expectancy. Thanks in advance for your help, Hillary. From (laughs) HDR at ClintonMail.com to Terry McAuliffe, subject, ironic thought. Terry... Sorry for the second email, but I just thought of something kind of funny. Wouldn't it be ironic if your executive order allowing ex-convicts to vote in Virginia meant that former felons could actually have the chance to vote for a future felon? Of course, now that I've said that out loud, it's not as funny as I thought after all. But it is ironic, don't you think? (laughs) Hillary. From HDR at ClintonMail.com to Uma Abedin. Subject, positive gangs. Miss Wiener. I don't understand why everybody is making fun of my remarks last week. You know, the ones about positive gangs. They would give troubled youth who don't have much of a family the chance to feel like they were part of one, but in a positive way. I think I know a little about what I'm talking about here. I did my share of gangbanging in college at Wellesley. Instead of the Bloods and Crips, East Coast and West Coast, we could have the Cackles or the Superdelegates. Those both sound hip to me. Your thoughts? Love, Hillary. P.S. You were amazing last night. From HDRClintonMail.com to Jake Sullivan, subject coughing fits. Jake, can you make sure that when you answer questions about my recurring coughing fits, please explain to the media that all I do is talk? That's all. I don't do anything. I don't make anything. I don't contribute anything. I don't fix anything. I am a professional talker who hides behind the title of politician, so they need to cut me some slack. If I get a tickle in my throat from time to time, then get me some damn cough drops and that work or you're fired. Take care. Hillary. <clears throat> and that, folks, is the end of this segment of A Day in the Life of Hillary Serve. She's a very sleazy girl. The kind you don't want for commander. Commander in chief. She will never let her guard down. Let's get her off the street. Love the way Al worked the little double on 
Chandra in there. Blow Billy. I'm just saying. Um, so anyway, for those of you who like the emails, again, those are provided by one Mr. Eric Williams of barbwiresatire.com. Make sure you go check out his website. Make sure you do uh, check him out. He's here. Um, we'll probably be moving that segment to Mondays because I don't really want to make JR sit here and listen to me read emails for five minutes. Um, and he also does the weekend update on Game on the Sunday edition with JD and Stacy. so make sure you check that out as well. At this point, believe it or not, I think we are about out of time. I don't know. Wow. It goes a lot faster when you have a co-host. I'm saying. <laughs> I bet. All right. So any last words? Um, anything you want to touch on before we get out of here? Um, not really. I mean, just kind of the same old crazy thing happening. We'll just see where we uh, where we go until next week. All right. Well, speaking of until next week, why don't you go ahead and tell folks where they can interact with you? with you should they choose to do so in a minute already. all righty you can find me on uh twitter at, at j homestead h-o-l-m-s-t-e-d um i recently made a facebook you can find me on jr homestead on that too which is kind of crazy and then i've got a project i'm working on um uh with some really really smart tweets uh misfitpolitics.weebly.com is our site so check it out there's some smart stuff put up there Awesome. You got all kinds of stuff going on. All right. So as usual, I'm kind of the head honcho here at Talk. I also am the owner of Spark Radio Network. You can interact with me in several different ways should you choose to do so. Although, Lord knows why, when you can interact with my co-host and all the other great folks around here anyway. But you can interact with me uh, through Twitter. It's actually the easiest, quickest way to get a hold of me. You can find me at AOTR underscore host. If you are old school and you want to shoot me an email, you're welcome to do that at one of two addresses. You can do ricky at the sparkradionetwork.com, but who the heck wants to type that much? Feel free to just type in rick at k98talk.org. They both go to the same place. Uh, if you do like Facebook, you can hang out with me there. No, you're not getting my personal page, but you can hang out with me all you want at either the show page, which is America Off the Rails, or um, www.facebook.com forward slash Rowdy Ricky Robinson, which is my show host page. So you're welcome to send me a friend's request over there. We'll talk, we'll chat, we'll hang out. It'll be fun. But as a reminder, I do spend the majority of my time on Twitter because Mark Zuckerberg and I are not friends, and I don't really like the guy. <laughs> and on that particular note, folks, it is time for us to get out of here. I'll be back with you uh, live Monday. I'm actually taking tomorrow night off. If you missed the WNJC episode today that aired out there at 2 Eastern, you can catch it tomorrow night right here on K98 Talk. And I'll be back with you Monday. Hopefully, as long as Bryce is feeling better, we'll be back with Finding Common Ground on Saturday morning and the Opinion Nation show shortly thereafter. Uh, up next, we should have a fresh episode of... Uh, Jesse's POV, um, and there for a second I almost forgot the name of the show. And I had coffee before this started, too. That should just tell you what kind of day I've had. Anyway, folks, we are out. It has been my pleasure having everybody listen in today. Uh, JR, I didn't want to tell you beforehand, but we actually had quite a few people listening today, so I'm glad we didn't screw up too badly. Exciting. <laughs> All right, folks, <laughs> we're out. We'll be back next week, and I'll be back with you Saturday before you know it. Take care, and don't forget, find a way to get involved. Put down the remote, get off the couch. Unless you're a Trump supporter, sit back down. Just kidding. Kinda. See you guys, I'm getting him. Later. Game over, man. It's game over. In these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030.
Joe had huge problems with the IRS. I knew it was coming. I hadn't filed taxes since 1990. All the IRS letters coming in added up to a nightmare. It got up to like $68,000. My heart started beating fast. It's like, there's no way, man. I mean, I ain't going to be able to do this. Then they stopped his paycheck. So that's when I started making phone calls and found U.S. Tax Shield. U.S. Tax Shield went to work immediately. They just took the bull by the horns. What blew my mind is he called the IRS right then and there. So why is U.S. Tax Shield A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau? Joe knows. They saved me a ridiculous amount of money. If you owe more than $10,000 to the IRS or state, choose the company Joe chose, U.S. Tax Shield. It was the best decision I made. U.S. Tax Shield is the way to go. Life is good. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Call 800-471-3287. U.S. Tax Shield. boo Yes. <laughs> 800-471-3287. 800-471-3287.